Wang and Ma share the world, who says the Wang family cannot conquer the world. In the summer of 383 AD, on the eve of the Battle of Feishui, a history graduate student who was studying fishing crossed over to Langya Wangmi and found a war god Lu Yu. The fortune teller said that I was born an emperor. Wang Mi. No, you haven't, that's all hallucinations. Book Friend Group. 191714222, Keywords of the Novel. The Jean picks up a god of war without a pop dot up window, the Jean picks up a god of war. Download the complete text, and the Jean picks up a god of war. Latest Chapter Reading. Chapter 1. Wang's Yulang Zi Zhi Yuan. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Wang's Yulang Zi Zhi Yuan in the eighth year of the Taiyuan era of Jin, 383 AD, in the fifth month of summer. Riding on a shiny red haired horse, a white clothed gentleman rode on it, his slightly frail body swaying leisurely with the footsteps of the steed. Beside him, two strong men followed on one left and one right. Both of them were wearing ochre-colored shorts, with a body length of eight feet and a waist belt around ten. Under the sunlight, the sweat-covered muscle blocks shone brightly, indicating that they were from a family background. Especially the one on the left, with slightly red hair and beard, and an extremely fair face, it seems that it does not match the soil and water of Jiangnan, but has an inexplicable relationship with the Hu people in the north. His name is Duan Xian, and he is the most trusted guard of this gentleman. Whenever the gentleman goes out of the city for a stroll, he always takes him with him. Duan Xian, what are you looking at? Is it so strange for me to ride a horse? Have you been watching since just now? Duan Xian laughed heartily, his yellow and red beard rising high and almost flying into the sky. Lang Jun laughed. I feel that Lang Jun is particularly dignified today. Riding on a horse, his posture and demeanor are not inferior to those cavalry in the northern mansion. Mr. Duan's flattery has been getting better and better lately, and he's not inferior to me in the Jin dynasty. The person on the right, named Chen Ding, has a burly physique, but his heart is a bit narrow. When speaking, he always carries a gun and a stick. Lang Jun Mingjian, I absolutely have no intention of flattery. I always speak truthfully and without any falsehood. I just feel that the gentleman who stepped on the stirrups has a completely new riding style. If these young ladies from Jiankong City saw him, they would definitely admire him even more. Duan Xian, the archer, reported with a particularly serious expression. When it comes to the young lady who built Kongcheng, the young man who was just proud collapsed his face. First of all, which pot is not opened and which pot is being picked up? Those women are really like wolves and tigers, you also know that it's because of the stirrups, not because I have improved my riding skills. When I return to Jian Kong, I must make sure that all the nobles and children in the city use this treasure. The double stirrups were the first contribution made by the young man after crossing the river. With these paired stirrups, even a descendant of a poor equestrian family like him can ride on a horse steadily and confidently. Why am I here? All of this is not a dream, is it? Since he opened his eyes on the lawn, whenever he had free time, these two questions kept spinning in his mind. He, Wang Mi, an amateur rider of the 21st century, has not yet graduated from the history department's fishing master's program. How could he suddenly break into the army of time travel? It's so magical in the world. After a failed competition, he fell off the horse and by the time he opened his eyes, he was already lying in the grass on the shore of Kair Lake in the strategic capital of the Eastern Jin Dynasty. Duan Xian and Chen Ding, two attendants, helped him up. After pretending to be weak for a while, he finally figured out the identity of the master. He has traveled. The one who has traveled through time can be considered to have a name in history. He is the son of the famous Eastern Jin Dynasty aristocratic family Langya Wang, Wang Mi, Wang Ziyuan. At first, Wang Mi refused this fate, but he really liked Wang Mi's small face. It is said that Wang Langjun was deeply loved by young girls and women in Jiankong City, 
and Jian Kong called him Pan An's reincarnation. He is now 23 years old, just in his prime. As a legitimate member of the Langya Wang family, he has entered the officialdom and is currently serving as the Secretary General. Although his position is not high, it is still considered respectable. The key is that the family who became the emperor also had a very good relationship with him, especially Emperor Sima Yao, who made him his confidant. However, no matter how much you value me, working under your useless hands will ultimately lead to failure and failure, and I won't be able to achieve great things. Once he arrived, he remained calm. Wang Mi accepted his fate and steadily became the secretary general of the Eastern Jin dynasty, Wang Mi. However, how did the husband think of renovating the stirrups? The sensitive Chen Ding felt that Wang Mi's temperament seemed to have undergone subtle changes in the past few days, but he couldn't explain which kind of change it was. All kinds of behaviors were strange, such as adding two stirrups to the saddle. Wang Mi wouldn't have thought of it before. Wang Mi pouted, knowing they would ask. Forget it, take this opportunity to tell a lie and deceive them. It's not because you're not doing well. Even though I know I'm not good at horseback riding, I don't know how to add stirrups to my horse. If you had done this before, would you still need me to do it myself? Duan Xian was completely unjustified and quickly defended himself, damn it, my subordinate. It was indeed my negligence. When I got on the horse, my subordinates always jumped up with just one leg, and I didn't need stirrups at all. Wang Mi snorted, what is this saying? Is it good to show off their riding skills? However, the gentleman didn't need to do this either. He wanted to ride a horse, and we just had to carry him up and down on our backs. There was no need to step on the stirrups to get on the horse. Compared to the two, Chen Ding had more heart than Wang Mi, so he wouldn't say anything. He nodded and obediently obeyed. What do you know? My stirrups are not just for riding horses. Didn't you notice that I've been riding horses much more steadily lately? This guy with eyes but no eyeballs, Wang Mi was so angry that she shook the stirrups under her feet. This is a pair. Didn't you notice the difference? Did you not notice that my feet have always been in the stirrups? Duan Xian and Chen Ding still had a confused expression on their faces, and Wang Mi was very helpless. The road to popular science is heavy and far ahead, and we cannot rush for a moment. This time, Wang Mi left Jian Kong and came to Jinko. She accepted the advice of her friend Wang Gong, the Yin of Danyang, to come and observe the movements of the soldiers from the north of Jinko. It is now the summer of 383 AD, and the famous Battle of Feishui in history will begin this winter. As the commander of the Beifu army, the champion general, third rank, Xia Xian and the eagle general, fifth rank, Lu Guanji, these powerful Beifu generals will all come to Jinko one after another to recruit new soldiers and be responsible for training. Since the Jin people migrated south, their opponents have changed wave after wave. Now, most of the major enemies in the north have been defeated, not by the Jin people, but by the bloodless Di Qin. As early as many years ago, the Qin lord Fu Jian, who was eyeing the Jin dynasty, showed great ambition to annex it. However, now that he has successively captured the Yen state of the Murong clan, Fu Jian, who is hostile to the Yang clan, can no longer sit still and is eager to annex the Jin dynasty. Wang Mi, who has traveled through time, is facing such a situation. Xingyao. Unfortunately. In the court, due to the imminent war, several major aristocratic families in the Eastern Jin dynasty, as well as the Emperor Sima Yao who was eager to restore the authority of the Sima family, are now reluctantly united to rebuild plastic friendship. However, Wang Mi, who was fortunate enough to come to Jinko, temporarily set aside the disputes in the court. He was looking for someone to excavate the southern war god who was still rolling in the grass. Since arriving in Jinko, Lang Jun has been wandering in the countryside. I heard that General Inyang has arrived at the military tent of Beifu. Should we also go and see him? Chen Ding suggested, but Wang Mi remained relaxed and didn't even listen to a word. Don't worry, 
what I'm looking for is another person with the surname Lu. A person surnamed Lu. Chin Ding scratched his head and had no clue. He had never heard that Secretary Wang knew any noble children surnamed Lu. Besides, in a place like Jinko where weapons intersect, can there be a friend of Secretary Wang? Don't look so happy on her face, in fact, Wang Mi is also very anxious in her heart. These days, he has been wandering in the countryside, just to find the most important helper on his way to success. Although he had long known the name of this person, even where he lived, he could easily find it by asking the neighborhood chief. But he doesn't intend to do this. We are time traveling, but we also have a sense of propriety in our actions and can't be too ostentatious. He had never met this person before and went straight to visit them. According to historical records, this person is only 17 years old now and still in a state of no size for grass shoes. What should he do if he scares them? Is it still the most romantic encounter by chance? Jinko Tiger, Lu Yu, Lu Jinu, where exactly are you making a living? New work upload, seeking support. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Prison Soldiers Climbing on Youth Seedlings, New Book Seek Support. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 2 Prison Soldiers Climbing on Youth Seedlings, New Book Seek Support, G. New, You're Tired. When I clean up this weed, I'll give you the money. A big man with flying eyebrows, born with a tiger's back and a bear's waist, long hands over his knees, roared loudly as if even mountains and rivers could change color. Lu Yu moved his muscles and bones, turned his head, and said with a smile, By the way, you're too polite. You promised to come and help, so there's no need to pay. I see that there are already many reed marshes growing on the other side of Kayer Lake. When your work is finished, I will go set up a boat and catch the reeds. Sending slaves, going to collect reeds, I'm afraid we'll have to cross the bridge. It'll cost a lot, so be careful. Beside Lu Jinu, a strong man had been bending down to work. He had a calm and determined temperament, and because he was naturally outspoken, he would easily drool when he spoke a lot. Therefore, he rarely spoke, but as soon as he spoke, he would speak with good words. Tan Pinji and Wei Yongji are both northerners who migrated south and have been settling down in the famous overseas Chinese county of Jinko for over a year. Although Lu Yu's family was also poor, he often helped them. In addition, Lu Yu had the best martial arts skills among the few, and he also had the nickname, Jinko Tiger, in Jinko. Therefore, the two of them admired him very much and always unconsciously thought of him. Recently, the Di and Qin sides have been fierce in their military and frequent movements, and the area of Jinko has always been the front line to resist the Northern Iron Cavalry. In order to prepare for war, the court once again raised taxes. For any ship that passes through a bridge in a state or county, no matter what you want to sell, as long as you want to do business, you must pay taxes. This tax money can still be borne when there is no war at the border, either revoked or taxed at 10 to 1. But recently, the tax has risen to 10 and 5, and a ship of reeds can only be sold for a few dollars, and heavy taxes need to be paid which is quite uneconomical. A few people piled up the miscellaneous grass on the roadside, and Lu Jinu wiped his sweat and smiled, saying, it's not a problem. I'll go collect the reeds first, and then go to the bridge to see the situation. If the officials manage it strictly, I'll carry the reeds on my back and not set up a boat. If the management is loose, I'll cross the bridge by ferry. Wei Yongji nodded, as if lost in thought. Once you have a plan in mind, that's it. Lu Jinu clapped his hands, picked the weeds off his body, and a few people sat by the field ridge to rest for a while. Tan looked into the distance with it and sighed, this peaceful life used to be unimaginable. If only my brother and the others could also see it, how wonderful it would be. Tan Inji's family crossed the river from the north of the Yangtze River, braving numerous obstacles and difficulties. It is unknown how many difficulties and dangers they had overcome. All of Tan Inji's brothers died on the road, 
and Taninji went south with a dozen or so nephews to live together. Wei Yongji empathized and tears instantly filled his eyes. Lu Jinu held the straw in his hand, sympathizing with them without experiencing significant emotional fluctuations. After all, although Jinko was a famous military stronghold of the Jin dynasty, Lu Jinu, who was just 17 years old, had never stepped into a military camp, let alone had direct contact with the iron cavalry, bows, and horses of the Hu people. Ji knew, I plan to join the army these days. What do you think? Tan recovered from infinite emotions and sought Lu Ji Nu's opinion. In the eyes of these refugees who migrated south, if they were to join the army, it would be all the old and young men going together. Local heroes like Lu Jinu in Jinko could not be absent. Ji Nu nodded and looked at him with a firm gaze, I also have this intention, but I think we should find a good time to join the army, wait a little longer, not in a hurry. What timing can we wait for? Tan couldn't understand why it still depends on the timing when it's so easy to join the army. He had already figured out the conscription standards for the Beifu soldiers, mainly examining the martial arts of the selected candidates. The most important thing is the arm strength for archery. As long as you can pull a stone long bow, it is considered qualified. Tan Inji and Wei Yong came from the north and were skilled in both swords and arrows. As long as they took the exam, they should be able to pass. Tan leaned his head to look at Lu Yu and said, Ji Nu is even stronger than me. I have seen him ride a horse hunting in the countryside before, and his archery and horse skills are naturally lacking. What exactly is he waiting for? A dozen or so villagers gathered together, speaking one word at a time, and the topics of discussion revolved around joining the army. Only Lu Yu, a famous villain from Jinko, never talked too much. If there is no burden at home, he also wants to join the army, go to battle to kill enemies, and achieve a career. But the problem is that his family has an widowed mother and two underage younger brothers. As the only male servant in the family, if he leaves, there will be no strong worker in the family. He is the eldest son and cannot ignore the livelihood of his family. Da 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 a sound of hooves sounded, and dust flew around the fields. Lu Yu quickly stood up and let out a loud shout. Not good. Protect the rice seedlings. Before he could finish speaking, he saw a convoy of more than ten riders roaring towards the yellow soil. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. As the leader, the iron helmet used in ancient warfare was decorated with a red tassel, resembling a leader of a team. He swung his whip and drove the farmer who was still working in the field aside. Then, a row of horse hooves stepped over and passed by. From the green seedlings that farmers work hard to cultivate a burst of smoke and dust rolled up, causing Wang Mi's plain white clothes to be covered with a lot of dust. He covered his nose and watched the people and horses along the way. This Lu Guanji, leading troops or being so reckless, is so rampant in the countryside. How can he establish his authority in Jinko? Duan Xian also said, when I was in the north, I once heard of General Lu's name. I heard that he was always brave in battle and had taken the lead. However, recently I heard rumors about him in Jinko, but most of them were not satisfactory. However, as the main general, as long as you know how to lead troops, you can make your subordinate soldiers obey orders and calmly face the battle. Wang Mi shook her head, and for an average general, such performance may also be considered qualified. However, as a general or even a future star, if you don't control it strictly, you will definitely suffer a great loss. Lang Jun Look! The soldiers of Beifu and the villagers are fighting. Wang Mi was riding on the horse, with a wider view. He fixed his gaze and couldn't help but really open up his stance. Let's go over there and watch them fight. Wang Mi turned her horse's head and walked towards the big banyan tree on the other side of the path. Duan Xian and Qin Ding looked at each other in confusion. What's wrong with Lang Jun? Why did he suddenly become so active? They are not yet able to adapt to the strange actions of Wang Mi after crossing the river, 
but they have become accustomed to them over time and will definitely encounter any strange ones. Duan Xian had already bent down, intending to provide support for Wang Mi and facilitate his dismounting. However, Wang Mi shook his hand and drove him aside. Is it still difficult to dismount with a divine object like a stirrup? He jumped off the horse's back with a swift leap, leaving both of his attendants stunned. Is Shaolang possessed by a deity? Surprisingly, my skills have become so good. Especially Duan Xian, he looked at him with a kind of admiration in his eyes. My husband Wang is handsome and has good skills. He is truly a flawless and perfect person. In Wang Mi's sight, the brave and combative villagers in Jinko were facing off against the Northern Army, the most powerful force of the Jin dynasty. What will be the outcome? He is very curious. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 The Great Han in Jinko is hard to handle, new book uploads for support. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 The Great Han in Jinko is hard to handle, new book uploads for support, you guys stop. Stepping on our seedlings, don't want to leave. A dozen or so strong men were working in the fields, and with just a few brisk steps, they rushed onto the dirt road, among which Lu Yu was the fastest. Jinko people have never been easy to deal with, showing off their strength and fighting fiercely, and being consistent with others is their glorious tradition. Lu Yu stopped drinking with one sound, and all the villagers in the fields, including those in nearby thatched houses, jumped onto the main road by copying their stories. The red tassel soldier led by him, named Yuan Fei, was the leader of the Beifu army. He spat and looked disdainfully at Lu Yu, saying, it's just a few seedlings of grass. How much money can they be worth? Hurry up and let's go hunting. He he the shelf is quite big. Although Lu Yu is only seventeen years old, he is already a notorious villain in Beijing. How could he be afraid of being a small team leader? Wei Yongji whispered in his ear, Ji knew, these days they've been wandering around the village every day. I heard they don't treat the village very politely. Lu Yu nodded and said, don't worry, I have my own sense of propriety. Lu Yu refused to back down, and Wei Yongji had to retreat to the rear to observe the changes in the situation. More than a dozen farmers were stuck on the main road, and there was an increasing trend. The cavalry could not pass quickly, so they had to patrol their warhorses anxiously and wait. Lu Yu stood up and the archer said, Your esteemed officials, although the green seedlings are not valuable, they were also planted by us through our hard work. It's not appropriate not to give an explanation. Yuan Fei grinned and sneered, What a clever farmer who has delayed General Yang's important matter. Can you take responsibility? He kicked his feet and said he was about to urge the horse again. And the warhorse under his crotch was also shaking its hooves, with its thick nostrils occasionally emitting hot air. Lu Yu remained neither humble nor overbearing. I dare to ask the official, but General Yang is Lu Jianji, General Lu. He was just waiting for an answer. Lu Guanji's control was not strict, and his soldiers often harassed the villagers, which was already well dot known to everyone. Today, Lu Yu jumped out just to give vent to the old and young men. Immediately, Yuan Fei's eyes lit up and he said, No wonder you still have some knowledge. Since you know we are General Lu's subordinates, why don't you quickly move away? He raised his whip and waved his hand, saying, I tell you, at this very moment, the general will go hunting in the forest ahead, and no one is allowed to step into the forest for half a step. It's okay if Yuan Fei didn't speak, but as soon as he spoke, he instantly ignited the anger of the men from Jinko. Ji knew, hurry up and make him lose money. What's the point of spending so much time on it? That's it. If you don't lose money, it depends on the guy. Let them see who is in charge of Jinko. Behind Lu Yu, the farming tools in the hands of the old and young men clanged, and some farmers who rushed out of the thatched cottage even carried long sticks. They glared angrily one by one, their sleeves and teeth cut, and as long as Lu Yu greeted them, they promised to make a huge impact on him. 
the soldiers beside Yuan Fei were shocked by the current situation, and this was the first time they had seen such a brave villager. You should know that the villagers of other villages and towns would tremble with fear when they saw the horses of the Beifu soldiers. Team leader, a big battle is imminent, and the general will still be conscripting troops in Jinko. Let's not get too into a stalemate with them. The soldiers around us have already released their wallets, and in order to leave quickly, it doesn't matter how much money they give. His voice was not loud, but Lu Yu listened attentively. At this moment, as long as either he or Yuan Fei took a step back, today's situation could be considered calm. Either lose money or apologize, however, Yuan Fei has always been used to being rude and doesn't know what an apology is. He tightened the reins with both hands and looked down at the strong man from top to bottom. Lu Yu, however, was not in a hurry. The official saw it, and the brothers all had the same idea. The official either compensated the money or offered a gift to the brothers, and that's it. Only a few of you villagers still want to fight me. Do you want money? What kind of spring and autumn dreams do you have? Yuan Fei remembered that just now they called this strong man Ji Nu. He shouldn't be the notorious demon king of Jinko, Lu Yu. Are you Lu Yu, the notorious demon king of Jinko? Under the big banyan tree, Wang Mi's beautiful eyes lit up like paint. Lu Yu. He said this strong man is Lu Yu, isn't he? Chen Ding's head was full of question marks, what's wrong with Xiao Lang? Just a rough guy from Jinko, do you need to be so excited? Indeed, I heard them say the same thing. Great. You really have nowhere to find a place to break through iron shoes, it takes no effort to get it. Xiao Lang is really talented. Duan Xian's gaze at Wang Mi became even hotter. In the past few days, he noticed that Wang Mi, who had always excelled in writing, was becoming more and more refined on the grand road of literature. Always able to blurt out many poems and idioms that they have never heard of before, it's simply effortless. It was this person that Wang Mi was desperately searching for. In order to find Lu Yu and win him over, he has been wandering around the streets and alleys of Jinko these days. It's really hard work. Today, he finally achieved his wish. To forge a bloodline in the chaotic era of the late Jin dynasty without the assistance of generals like Lu Yu who were capable of fighting and fighting, it was simply a dream. Wang Mi, who had traveled through time, carefully considered her own situation and formulated such a plan. Gather the god of war Lu Yu and guard his little king. Although Lu Yu has a cruel personality and claims to have completed the six emperors, these are all later words. The urgent task now is to recapture the central plains. On this difficult road, Lu Yu is the best helper. Lu Yuxing's five-sided face, dark skin, wide forehead, and bright and lively eyes fully reflect his resolute personality. Since Lu Yu is the one who is leading the way, then the leader of the Beifu army team is guilty. Tan took a step forward and shouted loudly, If you have the ability, come down. Let's take a few moves. If you win, our brothers not only won't give us a penny, but also obediently let you step on our backs and mount the horse. Tan has a hot temper and is quite aggressive. In the year he came to Jiangzhua, although he fought a few times, his opponents were all villagers and it was not easy to get tough. It was really not satisfying. Seeing the rampant Beifu soldiers this time, I immediately regained my energy and my palms itched. He is provoking, he is very clear, and Lu Yu is also very clear. He is waiting for someone to jump out and start a problem. Get off the horse. Get off the horse. In an instant, a mountain roaring tsunami surged, and the farming tools in the hands of the villagers rhythmically struck the ground. The yellow soil churned up, and the passionate atmosphere of the masses had already risen. Wei Yongji whispered, By the way, these are all subordinates of General Inyang. Their martial arts are good, so be careful. Tan snorted and said, Just like them, I'm more than enough to fight five at a time. Tan opened his posture with it, his long eyebrows flying up, and the flesh on his arms protruding one by one, 
showing the characteristic of being a tough person from top to bottom. Lu Yu's toes trembled a few times on the wooden clogs, and everyone immediately received a signal. Ji Nu Gu loves to wear clogs, as our brothers all know. Although these are just ordinary belt clogs, they are very useful. Every time they fight, everyone will stare at Lu Yu's feet. As long as his toes start to move, it is a signal to take action. Great. Today I can finally give these arrogant Beifu soldiers some color to see. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Soldiers Never Tire of Deceit You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Soldiers Never Tire of Deceit, Are You Going to Fight Now? Wang Mi widened her eyes and nervously watched the changes in the situation. As a traveler, he possesses all the characteristics of an outsider and is curious about what happens in this dimension, jumping up and down with excitement. Ji Nu, let me see your true strength. Lu Yu was unaware that there was such a strange person nearby who was cheering him on. Staring solely on Yuan Fei's every move. Wei Yongji is not a coward, and even when it comes to fighting, he won't back down. However, he is a calm and wise person. However, today's fight would not be worth it if it started. He then turned to Lu Yu's side and advised, Ji Nu, when they leave, we will go to negotiate under the North Mansion's account. General Lu will definitely compensate according to the price. Lu Yu stared at Yuan Fei on horseback, feeling anxious. What's going on? Why hasn't this guy come down yet? Why did we have a fight if he didn't come down? Why haven't the officials dismounted yet? Isn't it cowardly? Who said it? Yuan Fei jumped off the horse with one leg off, and his figure suddenly became a bit shorter. Standing on the flat ground, people realized that the imposing leader of the Beifu army was not as tall as Lu Yu. We have to do our best to show respect to our officials, Lu Yu smiled. The team leader had already dismounted, and several soldiers behind him couldn't sit still. They all jumped off their horses. Lu Yu cleverly noticed that just as the soldiers were dismounting, a small soldier, riding his horse, ran in the opposite direction. I must have gone to deliver a letter to Lu Guanji. Wearing wooden clogs, Lu Yu drew a circle on the dirt ground and chuckled to himself. As long as he gets off the horse, he won't be his opponent anymore. At least let the officials show us the skills of our Jinko brothers. So far, Yuan Fei has not even given Lu Yu a serious eye. He has long heard that there are many heroes gathered in Jinko, and this person, known as the one sending slaves, seems to be the strongest one. But he didn't take Lu Yu seriously at all. The soldiers who could enter the Beifu were carefully selected, muscular and skilled. Can these rural villagers who only know how to fight be compared? The distance between the two was too Zhang, and Lu Yu pushed the angry Tan Pingji and others behind him. If we fight alone, we rely on him, Lao Lu. If these people don't show martial arts ethics, then we can all fight together. This is their tacit understanding. Team leader. Let's go up together and beat them down with just a few punches and kicks. There were also a group of people behind Yuan Fei who were crowding and shouting, all of whom were bullies and afraid of the hard. These soldiers, no matter how skilled they are in martial arts, all carry weapons and armor, fully equipped. In their eyes, rural villagers like Lu Yu are simply not enough to fill their teeth. Yuan Fei was praised by them, and his confidence immediately doubled. He gritted his teeth and secretly had a plan. It is said that war never tires of deceit, but how can there be no deceit in the use of war? Lu Jinu, I know you are a famous villain in Jinko, but what can you do to me? Since you know my reputation as a slave brother, why don't you apologize quickly? A strong man with a black headscarf on his head shouted, hugging his arm. If we fight, we are afraid that there will be people watching the commotion. If it weren't for these idle words, perhaps both sides wouldn't be able to move. But with these rumors, if we don't take action, then are you still a man? Yuan Fei's gaze was fixed on Lu Yu, motionless as if gathering strength, 
but Lu Yu noticed that his black boots moved. Lu Yu, we are Beifu soldiers and cannot compete with you as a farmer. You don't have weapons, and I don't bring weapons. How about that? As he spoke, Yuan Fei threw his sword onto the roadside, and the soldiers behind him followed suit. This is quite a matter of human affairs. Tan couldn't stop his smile before Yuan Fei took a big step forward. With both fists swung, it was aimed at Lu Yu's chest. You can tell from his behavior just now that this person is not a moralist. He did indeed remove all his weapons. But that was just a cover-up move for him. As soon as the sword landed, he took the first step. Catch him off guard, that's his tactic. This scumbag is deceiving. Wang Mi screamed inwardly, instantly angry. It is said that it is a single-person fight, so it is fair to fight at the same time. Yuan Fei is the leader of the Beifu army and already has an advantage. But he still had to play tricks on an ordinary villager like Lu Yu who had never been to the battlefield. With just one move, his true strength was exposed, and he was very insincere. There are actually such cowards in the soldiers of Beifu, it's really shameful. Duan Xian stood on the wall and didn't even want to give a glance to such a scumbag. In my opinion, Lu Jinu will suffer losses, Chen Ding also said, and now everyone's eyes were drawn to this fight. Wang Mi chuckled lightly and said, not entirely. Whether it's a fight or a fight, the fight is full of momentum. The armor on this team leader's body is leather armor, and his protective ability is average. Maybe he can't even withstand Lu Jinu's old fist. Really? I don't believe it. The two attendants were both serious soldiers, and they regarded Wang Mi as an outsider, half believing and half doubting his words. Even bystanders could see Yuan Fei's bluff, and Lu Yu, whose eyes were blazing with flames, couldn't help but notice it. I've been guarding against his move for a long time. At that moment, Yuan Fei's iron fist was as fast as the wind, heading straight towards Lu Yu's chest. Lu Yu was already prepared, and with a slight squat, he dodged the strongest first punch. Yuan Fei's martial arts are good, but his foundation is not solid. From his few steps of running just now, Lu Yu can see that he belongs to the type of person with flashy moves and average real strength. He accurately recognized Yuan Fei's steps and with a light push of his hands, Yuan Fei flipped over completely. Yuan Fei was completely unprepared for his dodge, and the punch he had just given him was already the strength he had exerted all over his body. But Lu Yu deftly dodged it, and in one fell out of breath, revealing a flaw. Lu Yu had strong muscles and bones, with an endless amount of strength throughout his body. With skillful force, after a brief contact between the two, Yuan Fei seemed like a ball thrown high and bounced out. Bang with a muffled sound, Lu Yu quickly stood up. In front of him, Yuan Fei's subordinates saw that the team leader had suffered losses, but they would not easily let go and rushed forward like a pack of wolves. However, the dazzling giant target Lu Yu was unharmed. Behind him, a group of tigers composed of big men from Jinko had long been attacking them. Whether in battle or battle, those who can use intelligence will not use brute force, which is the basic principle of Lu Yu's attack. No way. This guy actually fell down. This is impossible. Chen Ding exclaimed in surprise, unable to believe his own eyes. Such a magical scene happened right before my eyes. The supporters of Lu Yu beside him, Wang Mi and Duan Xian, have particularly calm expressions. Isn't that right? You are the one with no vision, making a big fuss. Chen Ding, remember. Anything is possible. Looking far away, the chaotic struggle between the soldiers of Beifu and the villagers of Jinko has not yet ended, and a second wave has begun. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Lu Guanji Comes You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Lu Guanji Comes They actually copied guys. Playing tricks, a soldier shouted loudly, and Tan laughed heartily. Your team leader is still playing tricks. 
He's all like this, we're just villagers in the mountains and fields. What about playing tricks? For a moment, dust was flying and everywhere was the sound of punches and kicks hitting human flesh. Yuan Fei, who had been knocked down, had already climbed up. Just as he was about to counterattack, he felt his back sink and a strange smell seep into his nostrils. Team leader Yuan, punch me. Lu Yu's heart was black and ruthless, unlike Yuan Fei, who knew how to waste time by playing tricks. With a punch, he hit Yuan Fei's face. Yuan Fei's big nostrils immediately started to bleed. You. Despicable. Lu Yu couldn't handle so much, his feet wrapped around him, and his black toes were covered in black mud. Yuan Fei finally knew where the strange smell came from. This is also very rushed. You don't want to make things worse, do you? The people on both sides had already become a pot of porridge, and it was hard to distinguish each other. What do you want to do? Yuan Fei gritted his teeth and exerted all his strength to throw Lu Yu down. Lu Yu was a snake and hung on him, even though he tried his best, he still couldn't achieve his wish. Hurry up and give orders to stop your people. Do you think so? They'll stop and let you guys from Jinko fight for free. Lu Yu pressed his shoulder harder and harder, laughing and saying, Do you think our men in Jinko don't follow the rules like you do? Yuan Fei was immediately choked and speechless by him. He nodded and Lu Yu jumped down satisfied. Stop it. With a loud roar, it exploded in the stagnant air, and Lu Yu and Yuan Fei looked at each other. Where did the sound come from? No one spoke up. Looking for the sound, I saw not far away, on top of a galloping horse with thick black and shiny fur, a man with a purple beard was standing on his horse watching them. General Lu. Several injured soldiers from Beifu shouted loudly, and Wang Mi's lips under the tree wore an inexplicable smile. Lu Guanji, you have finally arrived. The feather fan in her hand swayed rhythmically, and Wang Mi was overjoyed. Today was really a good day. As soon as she left, she struck two birds with one arrow. She saw the two people she wanted to see. He has already witnessed Lu Yu's bravery and intelligence, and now it's time to see Lu Jinji's performance. According to historical records, Wang Mi's impression of Lu Jinji was not very good. Indeed, he was brave in battle, wielding a sharp sword, and had a certain level of strategy. However, his shortcomings are also very obvious. Narrow-mindedness, suspicion, lax control, reckless looting, greed for money, and spotted misdeeds are all clearly recorded in history. Looking at the quality of the soldiers under Lu Guanji today, it can be inferred that the historical records about Lu Guanji are relatively accurate. So what would he do in the face of such a dilemma in reality? The battle between the Great Han at Jinko and the soldiers from Beifu was difficult to distinguish, and they even had a slight advantage. While intoxicated, they suddenly saw the purple-faced Great Han, and his tiger eyes shone brightly, which immediately shocked them. They all let go and conceded to the roadside, but the momentum that no one could move remained undiminished. Lu Yu had already jumped off Yuan Fei's back, but now seeing the soldiers calling him General Lu, it is speculated that this person is actually Lu Jinji, the fierce general of Beifu, who is rumored to be leading troops to Jinko. When Yuan Fei saw Lu Guanji, his eyes suddenly lit up and he came. My thighs have finally arrived. He excitedly jumped forward, knelt down on one knee, and reported, General, these people from Jinko are extremely vicious. They have gathered to beat their subordinates and must be severely punished. Just now, when he said he wanted to cooperate, he immediately reported that Yuan Fei is indeed a cunning villain. Regardless of whether Lu Guanji believes or not, the tone must be high. Lu Guanji still sits on the horse, and his commanding feeling fully demonstrates that he does not intend to stay here for a long time. The soldier who went to report the situation had already explained the ins and outs of the situation. Upon hearing this, Lu Jianji, who was preparing to hunt, immediately became angry. Isn't this bad old man's interest? 
This small group of soldiers who came out to cause trouble was indeed appointed by Lu Jianji. Old Lu fought beautifully and had a big show. When he arrived at Jinko, he practiced diligently in his daily life, but his entertainment career did not fall behind. He is fond of hunting and can't stay idle whenever he has time. He prepares in a military tent and sends his subordinates to lead the battle. In ancient times, when nobles went hunting, they could not rely solely on themselves. They hunt not just to fill their stomachs, nor necessarily to prove their archery skills, purely for entertainment. Before each hunting, there must be young servants and maids who move forward to help the nobles gather the prey in the mountains and forests, and then provide them with hunting and play. Lu Guanji came to Beijing alone to expand his troops this time, without bringing his family or preparing for his residence. He only temporarily stayed in the military camp. I can't be so particular, just let the soldiers under his command search for prey for him. These soldiers are usually following him, and they know Lu Jianji's temper the most. He is not very strict in managing the soldiers under his command, Lu Guanji led his troops with a principle that as long as everyone rushed forward and worked hard, there was no need to follow the rules too much for the rest of the time. Lu Guanji originally did not want to take care of such small matters. The people of Jinko have always been aggressive and brave, which is also one of the reasons why the court values this place as a major source of troops. I had to take responsibility for the trouble I caused myself, but a sentence from the messenger soldier put Lu Jianji on the warhorse. We came to Jinko to recruit soldiers. If they kill someone, this matter will escalate. Lu Guanji fell silent. If he really killed someone the matter is really tricky. General Lu didn't even dismount and hesitated. I think these villagers are going to have bad luck. Chen Ding, who has always had criticisms of the Northern Army, naturally wouldn't have much praise for Lu Guanji, the Northern Army general. Duan Xian was also silent. Compared to Chen Ding who was constantly circling around Wang Mi, it was mostly him who had been conducting secret investigations in Jinko these days. Based on the information he received, General Lu did not manage his subordinates strictly and often harassed the people, causing unbearable suffering for the people of Jinko. Now that his beloved generals have suffered losses, how can he let these villagers go? Wang Mi remained calm and did not make any further comments. He still holds hope, at least he is also a general who has left his name in history. Lu Jianji doesn't have any advantages, does he? No way. No way. On the other end of Tianging Road, the confrontation between the Beifu soldiers and the villagers of Jinko continues. Lu Guanji had a very beautiful idea, but when he arrived at the scene and looked at it, he immediately took a breath of cold air. On the edge of the paddy field, there were several people lying upside down, dressed in coarse cloth clothes, but even more were soldiers wearing armor. All of them are his subordinates. And the strongest man was still entangled with the team leader Yuan Fei, beating and kicking. Looking at Yuan Fei again, he really can't beat him. How unreasonable. The combat power of Jinko people is really too strong. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Iron Whip Tree Authority you are listening at NovelFull.audio. This translator is experiencing an error, please try another translator. Chapter 7 Creating Encounters You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Creating Encounters Looking around, on the edge of the field ridge, there were endless sighs. The soldiers of the Beifu army did not act cautiously because their opponent was a resident of Jinko. On the contrary, they dealt heavily, and many villagers also suffered their losses. I have suffered a lot of skin injuries. We have protected the seedlings, and they have also recognized the planting, that's all. They are soldiers from Beifu and have a great influence in Jinko. We should also stop as soon as we see good news. Although Lu Yu is reasonable, the radical Tan still cannot accept it. Swearing and cursing, fortunately, with the cautious Wei Yongji, after some tugging and tugging, he finally took him away. Seeing the villagers scattered, Wang Mi immediately flipped over and mounted her horse. 
Let's go. Let's chase over and take a look. The horse's hooves kicked and soon caught up with the walking villagers. Lu Yu was tidying up the fallen agricultural tools, looking up and facing the clear gaze of Wang Mi. Oh! What a handsome little gentleman, Jian Kong is here. A big man with a black fur head wrapped around his head looked at Wang Mi with a special ripple in his eyes. Wang Mi felt a chill in her heart and quickly turned her gaze back to Lu Yu. If you offend General Beifu, are you not afraid that he will come to you for justice in the future? What kind of person is this? It seems that when one is weak, why bother to talk to him? Lu Yu was puzzled for a while, but still spoke candidly, why are you afraid? General Lu usually treats the village arrogantly. If you have time, you can go to the market to inquire. He often bullies us people from Jinko. I just have to endure today, and I can guarantee that he will bully us again someday. Today he saw the unity of our people in Jinko, and perhaps there will still be a third degree of fear, restraining evil deeds. Wang Mi immediately gazed at Lu Yu, and seeing his calm and unassuming answer, she felt a little more appreciative in her heart. You have confidence, that's the best. However, in the future, if General Lu threatens you or encounters difficulties, you can come to Changxing Yin to find me. After speaking, Wang Mi rode his horse and left. Wei Yongji looked at his figure and exclaimed in amazement, This Lang Junxing has a grand appearance. At first glance, he looks like a noble young master. Unexpectedly, his horse is riding very well. Lu Yu nodded in agreement. Speaking of the descendants of these aristocratic families in the Jin dynasty, it's really indescribable. Due to their lack of military prowess, the Jin dynasty turned the bow of their ships and advocated for mystical and simple discussions. They paid no attention to martial arts such as bows, horses, and archery. This kind of culture is most prominent among the children of aristocratic families. Many noble gentlemen, not to mention riding horses, have never even climbed onto them. And the white-clad gentleman in front of him is truly admirable for his ability to manipulate his warhorses so freely. Who is this gentleman from? Will he come to our capital? Tan sighed and Lu Yu shook his head. It must be a big deal. How did you tell? Lu Yu pointed to the soil on the ground and recalled, did you notice the strong man standing next to him just now? Her face is fair and her beard turns red. Tan suddenly realized and shouted, Xianbei people. Why didn't I notice? Strictly speaking, although Jinko was a strategic stronghold of the Jin dynasty, its contact with northerners was at best limited to the Han people who migrated south. Both Xianbei and Di people are considered rare species here. Not to mention the Jin people who could drive the Xianbei people, it is simply unimaginable. A few strong men suddenly became curious about the white-clothed gentleman. Perhaps he was also a general of the Beifu, so he disguised himself for a trip. Ji Nu, are you going to join him? Although the white-clothed gentleman did not explicitly state it, he must have meant that. Lu Jinu was full of courage and boldness, and naturally should be appreciated by the wise lord. If you can hold on to the right thigh, you can show your ambitions and rise to the top. This was a common practice in the Jin dynasty, which was based on family background. For generations, Lu Yu could also be considered from an official family background, but in his father's generation, his family was already in dire straits. Lu Yu's father, Lu Qiao, held the position of county magistrate in Jinko. Although his official position was not high, it was quite important. This official position is responsible for selecting talents from various states and counties, which is equivalent to modern personnel management. It is reasonable to say that the Lu family should be very wealthy, with many contributions from various parties. However, Lu Qiao was still an outsider in the Jin dynasty when he engaged in bribery and bribery. He was upright and could not rub sand in his eyes. Therefore, not only did he not become wealthy just because of this good job, but he also made his family's life even more impoverished. Not to mention, after only a few years in office, he fell ill and passed away, 
leaving behind orphans and widows, making life even more difficult to sustain. As the only male servant in the family, Lu Yu worked hard to earn money and maintain his livelihood. However, his friends around him knew that sending slaves to Jinko was just a temporary hibernation, and he was by no means a thing in the pond. The wooden clogs kicked and the yellow earth churned, and Lu Yu strode forward without paying attention. That gentleman looks up to me, and I am naturally grateful. However, if we want to make achievements, we still need to rely on ourselves. Besides, that gentleman didn't even tell us his name, so he probably just casually said it. Everyone nodded repeatedly and said, that's right. If he really wants to win us over, how could he not leave his name behind? Tan couldn't help but feel resentful and deceived. Jinko is not a big place, but there are many people because it is a famous county established by overseas Chinese, with frequent exchanges between the north and south. Merchants from all over the country also gather here. The market here is not inferior to the large and eastern markets of Jiankong City, with good business and many customers. So, as the largest Changxing Inn in Jinko, there are usually hundreds of people staying there every day. It's not as convenient as imagined to find someone who only meets once. Persuading his friends, Lu Yu had his own thoughts in his heart. That white-clothed gentleman did come from an extraordinary background, probably from several prestigious families in the court. However, Lu Yu cannot yet determine the true reason why he fell in love with him. He cannot act rashly until he understands his true thoughts. Farewell from his friends, Lu Yu rushed to the vicinity of Kair Lake and quickly collected a boat of reeds. He took a small boat and arrived near De Hang, the bridge was called Hang in the Jin dynasty. Sure enough, he saw that the bridge was already filled with servants, blocking pedestrians from collecting taxes. He made a decisive decision and tied the reeds into bundles, carrying them onto the bridge. Although he saved tax money, he didn't make much profit. These servants who collect bridge taxes are very cunning. They also know that villagers are unwilling to pay taxes and often park small boats carrying goods in inconspicuous places, carrying them onto the bridge. In order to catch such dishonest people who exploit loopholes, every servant who collects bridge taxes has a pair of keen eyes. If you travel back and forth in front of him more than three times, you are sure to be caught by him. So, Lu Yu's income today is still limited. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Expectations of a Kind Mother You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Expectations of a Kind Mother Lu Yu came from a poor family, and his so-called home was nothing more than three scattered thatched cottages. His dark hands helped the door, but before he could exert enough force, the door opened from inside. Big brother, you're back. We are all waiting for you to have dinner. My younger brother Lu Daoyan is already twelve years old, but he still has a childish expression on his face. When he saw Lu Yu, he immediately pulled him into the room. On the simple table, there are several dishes, although they are all ordinary household dishes, there are also meat and vegetables, which are quite rich. Lu Yu washed his hands in a copper basin and then went to the table. Xiao Wenshou, who was dressed in Jingchai cloth, heard the sound of the door and walked out of the inner room. Sending slaves, you've been working hard these days. Hurry up, have some fish soup to make up for it. Xiao Wenshaoxing has a long and gentle face. Thanks to her, what else should these three boys do in this family over the years? Since Lu Yu was able to start working, chopping firewood and selling shoes, although he didn't make much profit, he still made life at home easier. These days, he seems to have become more open-minded and has also learned from others to search for ways to make money everywhere, such as farming reeds, helping workers, and searching for profitable markets. The situation at home has finally improved, especially with the improvement of food standards. You can now eat meat and vegetables for several days in a row. The two younger brothers held their rice bowls and ate sweetly. Lu Yu looked at their satisfied expression, with rice grains still on both sides of his mouth, and his heart was also happy. He picked a chicken leg for his younger brother and put it in his bowl. Dao Lin smiled and said, 
Big brother, I've eaten a lot of meat these past few days. Let's give this to second brother. Second brother is older and needs to eat more. A chicken leg was transferred from Daolin's bowl to Daolin's bowl. Daolin was not polite and took a few big bites, saying, Hmm. How fragrant. Little brother, thank you. Tomorrow I'll teach you how to fight. Daolin took a bite of his meal and sneered, I think it's better to forget about it. Learning your eight fists is useless. I'll find a serious master to learn martial arts. Looking at the respectful and friendly appearance of the children, Xiao Wenxiu picked up a handkerchief and wiped the corners of his eyes. The children had all grown up and were still so good. He could also be considered worthy of his husband. Auntie, my child plans to join the army in the next few days. In the future, this family will have to worry a lot. Lu Yu hesitated for a long time before saying this sentence, while Xiao Wenxiu in front of him was not as surprised as he had imagined. She remained silent and gave Lu Yuxing a bowl of soup, placing it in front of him. Auntie, you already knew. Xiao Wenxiu let out a long sigh and spoke with a hint of sadness, the Beifu soldiers have come to guard Jinko again. They have been recruiting new soldiers for the past few days, and the Dichin in the north are also eager to invade. Even if you don't say it, Auntie will let you join the army. A good man has aspirations in all directions. How can he spend his days at home woodcutting, fishing, and hunting? Don't worry, join the army. With me at home, Dao Lian and others have grown up and can help me with things. Upon hearing these words, the two brothers of Dao Lian and Dao Lin immediately jumped up and ran to Lu Yu's side, promising, Big brother, you can go. We have us at home, and I promise to let my mother eat and drink well. No one dares to bully us yet. Yeah. Big brother, we must kill more enemies and come back with military achievements. Our whole family will have a bright face. Looking at their childish little faces, even their voices still spoke in a milky voice, Lu Yu was filled with thoughts for a moment. He is going to leave this house soon, and he really can't bear to part with it Lu Yu raised his hand and stroked the heads of his younger brothers, saying earnestly, you are still young, just do what you can. Most importantly, you must be obedient and sensible, and not cause trouble, especially when you show mercy. Do you hear that? Compared to the two younger brothers, the younger brother Dao Lin has a calm temperament, and even if Lu Yu does not instruct him, he will not cause trouble. It's this elder brother Dao Lin, who really gives people a headache. Although he's only twelve years old, he's so mischievous. Every now and then in front of the Lu family, there are neighbors who bring their own children to complain, all of whom are bullied by him. Lu Daolian pursed his lips, clearly ignoring Lu Yu's special advice. Big brother, I have grown up. I have a clear idea of what to do and what not to do. Don't worry. Lu Yu chuckled inwardly. With his recent performance, it's not easy to rest assured. However, time waits for no one, and he can't care much now. Opportunity cannot be lost, loss never comes again. He instinctively felt that this battle with Di Qin must be a decisive battle of life and death, and he must participate in it. Since hearing about the new movements of the Beifu soldiers, Lu Yu has been living an unstable life these days. There is something hidden in my heart, and my face always feels a bit heavy. For a humble child like him, joining the army is the most convenient way to achieve great success. His martial arts are highly skilled, which is also the most suitable path for him. However, the situation at home always makes it difficult for him to speak up. He has just reached adulthood and has not yet given his family a few good days, so he has to leave home to join the army, leaving behind orphans and widows. He really can't let go of it. So, whether to go or not to this place in Beifu changed his mind several times. In the end, he decided to go. After today's battle with the cavalry of Beifu, he became even more determined in this belief. It turned out that the elite Beifu soldiers who were trained every day had excellent martial arts skills. With Lu Yu's ability, as long as he enters the barracks, he will definitely be able to hold up a sky. Auntie, 
These days I will go to the horse shop to help them sell horses and earn more money. During the time of going to war, you don't have to worry about your livelihood, he turned to his mother. Xiao Wenshou tidied up the dishes and put on the tea. She frowned and felt that this matter was a bit hanging. Ji knew, I still want to ask you, can you perform your equestrian skills? You're not lying, are you? Xiang Ma is a new way for Lu Yu to make money. If you only earn a little money by selling reeds, how can you eat such a big fish and meat? Although Lu Yu is now an ordinary farmer, in fact, he has never given up his pursuit of martial arts. My mother Xiao Wenshou once wanted him to enter a rural school and enter the officialdom by studying and learning. Even as a minor official like a scribe, he was able to continue the official career of the Lu family. Who knew that Lu Yugen was not fond of studying, but was extremely enthusiastic about archery and hunting. A few years ago, when the previous Jinko County Magistrate was still there, Lu Yu was a member of his team, accompanying him to drive and hunt. It can be said that he had done the same thing with the Beifu soldiers today, as Lu Yu had done before. It is precisely because of these two years of experience that he became familiar with archery and enhanced his martial arts skills. Afterwards, the county magistrate was transferred and he was also disbanded and returned to the village. Over the years, although he has been supporting his family business, Xiao Wenshou knows that one day he will be back on horseback. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Why Wuji, a wealthy scholar You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Why Wuji, a wealthy scholar with a major battle imminent, Lu Yu felt that he would soon leave his hometown to fight everywhere. As the eldest son of this family, he should find more ways to make money and maintain their livelihood. So, he thought of the days when he followed the county magistrate on a hunting trip, because he saw many horses and was considered experienced, able to see the quality of the horses at a glance. He ran to the post office in Jinko to recommend himself and help them choose good horses. The lack of horses in the south is a common knowledge among the court and the public. But there must also be horses in some necessary places, such as the postal inspection stations scattered throughout the country. For the convenience and speed of sending and receiving letters, such communication stations can raise horses on their own. However, because it is not urgently needed on the front line, the horses owned by the postal inspection station are of relatively poor quality. Either old age or weak physical strength. Running slower but still working, Lu Yu aimed at such a place and suggested to the post station owner that he could help him select good horses from various horse shops in Jinko, negotiate prices, and earn intermediary fees from it. Surprisingly, the fierce tigers in Jinko can still ride horses. The station owner shook his head and waved his hand at this news, firmly refusing to believe it. Lu Yu doesn't mind either. It's okay if you don't believe it. I can help you choose a horse for free first. You can try it out for a few days, and if you think it's good, you can give me the money. How was the result? In less than 10 days, Lu Yu earned a lot of money and his family's living standards skyrocketed. Auntie, don't worry. My horse riding skills have all been confirmed by the owner of the postal station. If I deceive people, they won't tell at a glance and won't give me money. That's right. Xiao Wenshou nodded slowly. Ji Nu has always had his own ideas, as long as he can be confident, that's best. Tomorrow I'll go help them find horses again, earn more money, and maybe find some other way to make a living. Ji Nu, help your mother sell all these fabrics tomorrow, and then go do your own business. Xiao Wenshou pointed to the corner of the wall, and Lu Yu saw that on the edge of the grey-black mud wall, there were many pieces of cloth piled up. At first glance, there were as many as five or six pieces. Auntie, these fabrics are all woven by you through your hard work. Why don't you keep them for your two younger brothers to make clothes for? You can also earn a lot of money by going to horse racing. In this case, Lu Yu has said it countless times in the past few days. Xiao Wenshou knows in his heart that he doesn't want to make himself too tired. But after all these years of hard work day and night, she has long been accustomed to this kind of life. 
Her hands and feet are restless every day, always wanting to find something to do. She shook her head and smiled, saying, I know you're making a lot of money, and I can't compare to you. But these fabrics are also woven by my mother's hard work. Although the money is small, it's only a small amount of money that can be saved, don't you think so? Lu Yu nodded and promised his aunt that he would sell the cloth early tomorrow morning before going to the post office. There is also his own selfishness in this. Although the owner of the post office is generous and always gives him a lot of money, earning more money there has nothing to do with making achievements. Lu Yu still aimed at Beifu in his heart, which was the place where he could show his skills a young man in white, holding a scripture scroll in one hand and a feather fan in the other, walked slowly to the bamboo fence in front of the Beifu army tent. As soon as the guard saw him, he didn't ask for any credentials and nodded before letting him in. He Longjuan's appearance is still so elegant, a soldier turned around and muttered. The man in white sighed and threatened, if you like it, you can also dress up tomorrow. Good guy, how could he hear it? The two soldiers quickly stopped speaking, stood straight, and dared not speak anymore. He Langjun walked into the big tent, shaking his fan. Before he could see the figure of the main commander, he had a premonition in his heart. What kind of aura is this? So melancholic, so bittersweet. Do you still know to come back? The purple-faced man sitting on the throne was General Yang of the Northern Mansion, Lu Jinji. Xiao he quickly accompanied a smiling face and rushed forward. Uncle, of course I have to come back, but there are some things that have delayed me. Seeing his nephew, Lu Guanji's mood improved a bit. How did you read the book? He Wuji's face stiffened and he smiled, I'm reading, I'm reading. When it comes to reading, he Wuji's head hurts so much. Lu Guanji came from a family of military generals and has been in the military for generations. In the Jin dynasty, which was characterized by a high level of mysticism, the desolation of soldiers and generals was imaginable. Although Lu Guanji is brave and skilled in battle, he still has a sense of inferiority towards his identity, and it is unclear from where he saw He Wuji's talent for reading. Or, among the younger generation, only he looks the most like a scholar. In summary, Lu Jianji has established a position as a doctoral scholar for his beloved nephew, intending to lead him on the path of literary career. What is the result? He Wuji, on the other hand, had no interest in reading and only enjoyed wielding his sword and playing with a gun. After two years as a doctoral student, he didn't read many books and only wore this white robe that everyone wore as a doctoral student, which he loved very much. He wore it almost every day. Lu Guanji sighed and said, You're lying to me again. I heard you've recommended many people to your account these days. How do you have time to study? He Wuji chuckled and leaned forward, saying, Since you all know, why bother me? If I had missed books, I would have stayed in Jiankong long ago. Why come to Jinko? The servant handed over the tea and drank it with a thud. Seeing that his uncle was still worried, he asked, Uncle, why are you so worried? Who offended you? When it came to this matter, Lu Guanji immediately turned black. These Jinko people are unruly and difficult to tame, they are really infuriating. Our soldiers in Beifu really need more practice, how could they let those Jinko people take advantage? Thinking of the situation at that time, Lu Jianji was furious and couldn't sit still. The armor he had taken off was angrily thrown aside by him. He Wuji was shocked to hear that the soldiers of Beifu had suffered losses. Is what uncle said true? Our soldiers in Beifu were the most brave and skilled troops in the Jin dynasty, with the best bows, horses, cavalry, and archery. How could they suffer losses? Lu Guanji was blinded by the anger and his face turned unusually blue and purple. Tiger Fist clenched tightly and gritted its teeth, saying, Isn't it all his fault? Following Lu Jianji's gaze, He Wuji quickly discovered Yuan Fei, who had been beaten up by Lu Yu and had black eyes. Provoking the villagers, it's okay if we win. Surprisingly, even without weapons, we let others take advantage of us, saying that you are soldiers of the Beifu army. 
I find it embarrassing. Especially the one named Lu Yu, not only did he fight, but he also dealt the hardest. He really made me lose face. Although Lu Jianji was so angry that his teeth were itching, he did not lose his rationality. When he returned to the military tent, he immediately called Yuan Fei to his side and understood the causes and consequences of what happened today. I really don't understand, I don't know. It makes me even angrier. End of this chapter Chapter 10 He Wuji's Clever Hands Transforming Enmity and Resentment You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 he Wuji's clever hands transforming enmity and resentment these people are actually fighting barehanded, they haven't won yet. Moreover, the villagers of Jinko do not have an advantage in terms of numbers. They have more than ten people, but there are also eight soldiers from Beifu. Wearing armor and skilled in martial arts, the Beifu soldiers were actually beaten down several times. Lu Jianji couldn't accept this reality at all. He was infuriated and spitting at the stars, while He Wuji, who was listening attentively, gradually showed a smile. I'm so angry that you can still laugh. Lu Guanji was furious, this heartless thing. Without hesitation, He Wuji stood up happily and said, Uncle, it's not uncommon for the soldiers of Beifu to be defeated. At that time, the soldiers were all dismounted to fight. Lu Guanji nodded with a puzzled expression on his face and said, This is natural. There's no way to ride a horse in a group fight. That's right. He Wuji snapped his finger and walked around in the big tent. The soldiers of Beifu are indeed selected and capable individuals, but don't forget, my uncle. Their martial arts are all related to war, including bows and arrows, swordsmanship, and long halberds. However, when fighting with the villagers, they cannot use weapons. Recalling the scene at that time, Lu Jian nodded and said, Indeed not. When I arrived, all the weapons were thrown to the roadside. That's right. The so dot called, high martial arts skills of the soldiers in Beifu are all reflected in their ability to cope with combat, especially in cavalry. Only by mounting horses, archery, or facing off can their advantages be demonstrated. However, their personal martial arts skills may not be very good. Once they jump off their horses and land on the ground, whether it's fighting or endurance, they may not be as strong as the tough villagers. This does not mean that they are not diligent in training and are not useful in battle. Doctor He is absolutely right. Yuan Fei rushed forward, and at a glance, He Wuji was moved to tears. General, it is because we are unarmed that we cannot defeat those villagers in Jinko. I have heard that the villagers in Jinko are very evil. Throughout the year, there are more than a hundred gatherings of weapons like this. Although no lives have been caused, their unarmed fighting skills are indeed better than those of us cavalry. Doctor He is simply a kind and understanding person. Fortunately, Yuan Fei had misunderstood him before and felt that his elbow was turning outward. Now, it seems that the person who truly thinks about the soldiers of the North Mansion must be the people of the North Mansion. He was momentarily excited, and tears almost welled up in his eyes. Lu Guanji's anger was slightly calmed by He Wuji's words, and he glanced at Yuan askance, what are you complaining about? Didn't you still sneak attack? I can't even win like this, it's okay to speak up. Yuan faced silently, momentarily excited, forgot about this matter. Is it too embarrassing, so he automatically blocked it. He quickly retreated to the outside of the account, never daring to cause trouble for Lu Guanji again. Uncle and nephew sat down one after another, and He Wuji spoke up, Uncle, I heard that Wang Mi from the Langya Wang family has also come to Jinko these days. Lu Guanji's face stiffened and he was quite surprised, saying, How could this happen? Why haven't I received any news? It's normal that my uncle didn't hear about it. I heard that after they entered the city, they didn't disclose their identities and have been staying at Changxing Inn without any changes. It seems that strolling around the streets every day is not completely useless. This was the first time after arriving in Jinko that Lu Guanji affirmed He Wuji's method of doing things. 
He Wuji smiled heartily and said, that's natural. I came to Jinko, but for the sake of doing business, how can I not care about the movements of these court officials? Uncle, this secretary Wang also has a lot of face with his majesty. Do we need to visit him? Lu Guanji waved his hand and said, it's not necessary. Since he intends to hide his whereabouts, let's just treat it as if we don't know and see what he really wants to do. He Wuji has understood. I will obey my uncle's orders and continue to monitor Wang Mi and her actions. Once they threaten the northern prefecture, I will immediately report to my uncle. I can rest assured when you handle things. The uncle and nephew resumed their free and harmonious conversation, and He Wuji hesitated for a while before examining Lu Jianji's expression. Seeing that he had finally calmed down, he dared to speak up. Uncle, even if those villagers from Jinko can fight, they will still have to start from scratch in the military camp. Now that the court is employing people, why not recruit them all to the military? There will be many ways to set rules for them then. Lu Guanji did not immediately reply, but pondered the meaning of Hiwuji. His nephew, despite his young age and lack of seriousness, is actually more thoughtful and meticulous than anyone else, never saying useless nonsense. Why did he suddenly mention those villagers? After pondering for a while, Lu Jianji finally understood. You're trying to justify the villagers and don't want me to cause them trouble, are you? He Wuji awkwardly smiled and said, Uncle, I can't believe he understood so quickly. He's really too clever. This is still my nephew. Surprisingly, Lu Jianji turned his elbow outward, feeling very helpless. His nephew is good everywhere, but his personality is really different from him. Don't be fooled by He Wuji's lack of propriety in his daily life, but in reality, he is the most fair person and never favors others just because he is from his own family. The same goes for things like today. Although Lu Guanji wanted him to wear the same pants as himself, he also knew that his consideration was the safest. Don't worry, I won't trouble them. At least I lead tens of thousands of soldiers and horses. Do I have to fight against a group of villagers? Moreover, you're right. It's time for conscription now, and they all expressed their intention to join the army just now. They have excellent martial arts skills and will definitely be selected. I will personally teach them the rules of joining the army when the time comes. He Wuji froze for a moment, but ultimately compromised. He could imagine how difficult their lives would be when this group of Jinko people who had offended their uncles, especially the highest jumping Lu Yu, entered Beifu. But now, he doesn't have any more ways to protect them. It's already not easy for him to temporarily let his uncle put aside his hatred. In the future, we can only take one step and see one step, end of this chapter.